I'm Chief Meteorologist Ryan Martin with a look at Allendale's midday weather update. As we take a look at the latest surface analysis right now, still got some showers and thunderstorms holding on over Ohio and kind of squiggling back into central Indiana. This is behind a warm front now that's surging to the north and east, uh, bearing down on Detroit. Behind the warm front, a big slug of warm air is in play. You stepped outside earlier this morning, and you know what? The temperatures weren't bad yet. They still aren't in a lot of places, but boy, that humidity. Talk about walking into a wall of water. That's what it was like over a large part of the Corn Belt, and it's just going to get worse. That humidity will be a big player here. Heat index numbers across the Corn Belt already in the lower to middle 90s. They're going to top out in the upper 90s today. Upper 90s at triple digits as we go through tomorrow and into Sunday. Our next front is moving a bit faster, though. Looks like it's going to cross the Corn Belt from tomorrow afternoon right on through Sunday night. By Sunday, 7 to 8 p.m., the front should be down to the Ohio River Valley and pushing away. So it moves through faster, still brings good moisture. At this point, half to one and a half inch rainfall total, 75% coverage of the Corn Belt, what I'm looking at. If I'm concerned about some heavier rains anywhere, it would be back in Iowa, western Illinois, southern Minnesota, southwestern Wisconsin. The main reason, I think we could see a cluster of thunderstorms fire off just ahead of the front there. So you'd get that thunderstorm cluster and then the front itself to move through might lend itself to some slightly higher rainfall totals. We'll just have to see. Those thunderstorms could kick off already by tomorrow, I'll always say mid-afternoon. So that's what we're going to be watching there. After this system is done, you know what? The big heat goes away. Now keep in mind, when we're talking big heat, we talked those heat indexes here just a few seconds ago. Actual air temperatures, upper 80s to low 90s is what I'm looking at. So it's not a runaway to the upside here on actual temperatures. That's the key here. Plants don't care about the heat index. They just really don't. And warm and wet is better than warm and dry any time of the year. Now, so as we take a look at this, we're going to be seeing temperatures pulling back to normal levels, maybe even slightly below immediately behind the front, and then spending most of the rest of next week normal to slightly above. Some models are trying to bring heat back in toward the end of next weekend, and then again after that. Those are the heat-mongering models that have been talking about excessive heat for a while. Honestly, if I look at the actual pattern, I see us in a fairly decent zonal flow kind of setup as we go through the next couple of weeks. Yeah, you get some ebbs and flows of this warm air here, especially short term. But generally speaking, if you look at what the temperatures are like on Tuesday of next week, which they're going to be normal to slightly below, and then look at how the weather pattern, the atmospheric is setting up four to five days later, it's about the same. So why should we be talking about a 10-degree difference going from the low 80s, upper 70s, to the upper 80s to low 90s again when the airflow pattern is the same. That's that's just what I'm not getting here in some of these uh, analyses of the forecast models going forward. I'm not seeing the change. I don't think we're going to be cold by any stretch of the imagination, but well above normal, I think that's going to be difficult to see at this point. In terms of precipitation, most of it next week is going to be limited to the upper Midwest. I've got two systems that come across. One as we go through the 23rd, 24th, and then one 26th into the 27th. They originate in the northern plains, then move across Minnesota, Wisconsin, the Great Lakes, Michigan, and uh, move away. I think we could see rainfall totals up in the upper Midwest, upwards of an inch out of each system, so they could have some decent moisture with them. I just think they have a hard time going south of I-80. If I was going to have to pick one, if, if you held my head to the fire and said, all right, you got to pick one that could give rain farther south, I'll go with the latter, the one for the 26th and the 27th. And the reason why is we're seeing these systems want to have just a slight propensity to arc or curve back to the southeast as they get off to uh, over the Great Lakes. And so maybe, maybe that system, the 26th and the 27th, can curve down, get some shower and thunderstorm buildup into places like northeast Indiana, central Indiana, and on through Ohio. The rest of the Corn Belt, guess I'm not thinking that too much. There's plenty of time for these systems to build farther south. But right now, we've been talking about this week-long dry pattern over a good chunk of the Corn Belt for a while, over a week now. And at this point, there's no real reason for us to back away from that dry thought process based on a model or two here that just recently started to try and curve some things back down. As we go into the week after next, that last full week of July, keep an eye on the 28th. Could see some hit and miss shower and thunderstorm action there. Then a stronger front for the 30th into the 31st. So maybe some decent rains to finish out the month. When I say decent, we're talking mostly half an inch or less. Uh, could see up to an inch in some spots, but they're not big gully washing rain systems uh, like we were accustomed to earlier this year. That's the way things are stacking up. Have a great weekend. If you've got any questions on the weather, give us a call at Allendale. I'm Chief Meteorologist Ryan Martin.